pastor's ready to go. He's got his Bible on the podium. <laughs> I thought you were going to get up here and just start preaching. <laughs> Why don't you stand up and join us this morning? I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Tree of Life. If you're joining online, we're so glad you're here with us. Let's just open up our hearts, open up our hands, our mouths, and just begin to give thanks for the King of Glory. He's right here with us. He's right there with you at home. Come on, just tell him how much you love him this morning. Open up the gates of your heart with grateful attitude. Let's be 
on my suit Don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Oh, come on my soul Don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up 
as you receive that. And um, even now, you mostly begin to come to the front. Just go ahead and take a cup to get back to your seat. We're going to have this, take this together. Our first of the month Sunday communion time together. There's people all over the entire earth that are just celebrating the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those that are watching online, if you're tuning in here and it's the first time you've seen this, you can certainly feel free to join with us in communion there. If you get something in your house, if you have grape juice or whatever you have to drink, and something there, a little cracker of bread, just hold that in your hand as well. We'll take this together in a moment. But I want to remind you again that the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us, even though he brought salvation to us freely, it cost him his life. And the Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. What God is saying to us is, my son Jesus Christ laid his life down for, for you for, by, the, by his own blood. He's also telling us to lay our lives down for him. You know, the apostle said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I still live. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Luke chapter 22, verse 15. So they said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He then took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then verse 19 says, He also took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to them and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he also took the cup and supper and said, This cup is now the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So again, we need to remind ourselves and give thanks to God. First of all, the body of Jesus Christ, one who suffered for us. You know, God could have picked many, many ways for his own son to die and his own son to sacrifice his life for our sins. But what Jesus Christ did, not just on the cross, but the entire life he lived on the earth, he actually sowed things for the future. He sowed poverty, we might not suffer poverty. He sowed sleepless nights, we might not suffer from insomnia. He, he sowed things of discomfort, he sowed things of obscurity, that we might be those exalted by God. And time and time you see in the Bible, if there's things that Jesus Christ suffered and went through, he was sowing seed for our future not to suffer the same thing, but also by his body, by the nails and by the, by the cross, by the, by the thorns in his, in his own brow and by the spirit in his side. All these things were him paying the price. We might have victory over the curses loose upon this earth because of the sin of Adam and Eve back in the Garden of Eden. So right now, this uh, bread in your hands, let's just hold this up to God. Let's just give thanks and praise for what the body of Jesus Christ has done for us. Father, we thank you, Lord, that by the stripes upon the back of Jesus, we are healed. And Father, we praise God that also healing is called the children's bread. Yes, Lord. And we declare, God, that our bodies, our soul, our mind is healed yes, from the curse, Amen. from disease, from sickness, God, from curses, from things, oh God, that's been upon yes, our minds, oh God, of depression, of suicide. Things, oh God, that try to fix us and weigh us down and bring weakness, oh God, to us and, and zap our strength from us. We declare God has been paid for by the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beaten, bruised, broken, pierced for us. We give thanks and praise, remembering what you've done for us yes, over 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. Let's take this together. Lord, we just reflect right now for a moment that we, O oh God, are, are mortals, we're humans, we make mistakes. There's none who have not sinned. There's none who's righteous, O oh God, except for those who've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. So, Father, we say, Lord, just remove things from us yes. that may be habitual, God, may be a weakness, O oh God, may be yes. a propensity towards evil, towards the flesh. Yes. Let us, O oh God, know what it means to see the, the flesh crucified daily. Yes. Help us, God, to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, Jesus. Let, oh God, your precious blood that's taken sin from us also empower us. Please. Oh God, have power over death and hell and the grave. Please. Power over fear yes. and confusion. And every curse, oh God, the enemy tries to bring against us, even by the bloodline, God, be broken by the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. 
Father, we also praise God that your blood speaks today to those who are unsaved. Who need Christ as Savior. That you're drawing men and women of God by your Spirit into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because the one who is crucified upon that cross and rose again also has brought forth the Holy Spirit to live among us. Who draws men unto Jesus, unto salvation. We give thanks and praise for the benefits given to us by the blood of Jesus. We praise you, God, as he gets the Jews together. Just giving thanks to him. Praise God. You can sit those cups down somewhere. And um, let's stand to our feet here one more time. We're going to sing one more song of praise and worship to God as our children are dismissed. Our youth are staying here with us this first Sunday of the month. Let's just praise his name, glorify him, because God really is worthy of praise.
way, the truth, and the life. And her Father, you are the life giver, Lord, the one who sustains us, who gives us strength, who delivers us, who heals us. And as we came together this morning and celebrated, Father, the resurrection life of Jesus, we thank you once again that you rose from the dead, Father, and by doing that and sealing the deal, Father, that you are truth and that you are the one that is the life giver and the one that reaches out to us and sets us free. And we thank you, Father, that this blood goes on and on. It's a gift to us, Father, that never stops. And we thank you for that today, Lord. Father, I pray as we gather together that your um, mercy and grace, your intervention will be on our behalf today. That, Father, those that call upon your name will be saved. Father, those that seek you will find you. And, Father, I thank you that the redeemed of the Lord can say so today, Father. And we thank you because we trust in you. And so, Father, we just stand in agreement with those that are calling upon your name for something, some intervention, some provision, some deliverance. Father, we stand in agreement that that's what your Lord, your word says that you do and you are faithful to. So Father, those that are downcast, we declare that the joy of the Lord is their strength today. Father, for those that are feeling lost, Lord, you have said you are the redeemer, the king redeemer of your people, Father, for those that are fearful, Father, we thank you that it's the peace of God that passes all understanding in our lives. And Father, those that are seeking you, your word promises that we will find you. So Lord, we declare today, Father, that we lay it down at your feet and we ask you to intervene on our behalf. And we love you, Father, because you're a God that is not deaf and your hand is not short. And we love you and we thank you that your heart is towards us. We honor you today, Father. We give you the glory and the praise. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? He's a good God. He's a faithful God towards his people. We just want to welcome you all here today. And thank you for being with us. And those that are online, welcome. I'm going to share a very familiar part of Psalms today, and it's Psalms 91. We all know that one, I think, fairly well. Amen? <laughs> yes. But I wanted to highlight something to you. And he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. And that's how this psalm starts out. He who dwells in the secret place. So I'm challenging you today. Do you dwell in the secret place? Do you? Amen. I tell you what, that's where it all is. You need to dwell in his secret place. Amen. And it says, you need to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and you shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Amen. 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 No foe can withstand being under the shadow of the Almighty. I could stop there because that is so rich already. Amen. Yeah. And then it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Mm -hmm. He is my fortress and my God. Amen. On whom, him I lean and rely and him in him I confidently trust. Yes. We've got somebody we can trust. Amen. Yeah. We can trust him. He is faithful. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, the devil, the evil one, and from any deadly pestilence. Who can to testify to that? Amen. He can do that for us. And he covers up you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. That's what I'm going to read today. And I think that is something that should stir your spirit up and encourage you. Amen. Amen. He, Amen. He is the one that when we dwell in him, he brings forth his truth in our life. You know, this world has a lot of distortion around about it. A lot of distortion. It is full of lies. And things out there are, are sometimes do not look good and great. Amen. 
but it's the one that we can go to who has the truth. Amen. And so I encourage you, whenever you're questioning, go back to the truth. Because it's only this truth that will set you free. Amen. And it's only this truth that will do what it's just said it will do. And what did it say? It says, he will be our fortress, which is our amazing protector. He is our refuge. He, we, he is the one that we can trust in. He is our deliverer. He covers us. He shields us. I tell you what, that is a lot of amazing blessing in your life. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, whatever you hear, whatever you see, maybe truth, maybe not, check it out in the Word and stand on what the Word says is true. Amen. Amen. His truth is what will prevail and what will stand to the end of time and forever. It's the only thing. All this is going to fall away. But His truth is what stands and remains. And if you want to know his truth and you want to grasp his truth, you need to dwell in his presence and in his holy place and hide under his shadow. Amen? Amen. It is good that we can call upon the name of the Lord and he is faithful towards us. And he is truth. And that is what we need in our lives. Amen? I tell you, you hear so many lies nowadays and, and so many people that you can't trust or this and that. I know that sounds gloomy and doomy, but that's sometimes what it is, like Amen. round about us. But the truth of the word is what is truth, and that's what we need to go by. Amen. That's where our parameter is. That's where our borders are. Because in the truth is a safe place. Amen. It's a safe place being in the truth of God. Amen. Amen. Well, it is good to see everybody here. I'm glad you're with us. Welcome to those online today. Thank you for joining us. If it's your first time here, we welcome you. We have a gift for you. Miss um, Leslie over there has a gift for you. If you want to wave right there, she'd like to share with you. And then if you're online and first time this, please just click, click on our webpage, get connected, and we would love to connect with you that way. So welcome, everybody. And um, if you are a first-time guest, you can fill out this piece of paper, and we will be glad to um, just send you a letter and thank you for being with us. And there's also a part here that has prayer requests. If you wouldn't mind filling out your prayer request on that, and we will put it up in the prayer room and lay hands on it and believe God with you for what you're believing for. Amen? He's good. He answers our prayers. He is so faithful. All right. Um, some quick announcements. First of all, Wednesday night, we had our first uh, session in the marriage series. It was great. I mean, if you were here, wasn't it good? Yeah. It was good. And um, we want you to come back and to bring someone with you. Join us. It's at 7 o'clock, 6.45. We'll have some snacks. And um, it's really good. It's called Kingdom Marriage by Tony Evans. He's a great teacher. And um, I really enjoy the way he teaches. He's very precise and he's very good at getting across his points. So I hope none of the um, people that went home with the books, you know, was talking about having conflict sometimes. And I was like, one of the couple will say, let's do the book. We've got to do the study. And the other one will be like, ah, I don't want to really do that. <laughs> so don't fight over that, okay? Just, just, just you know, embrace whatever the other person is built like, okay? And um, you'll get through it. But come join us this Wednesday night if you can. Um, the next following week is spring break. And so that Wednesday night, we're going to be having a game night here at the church. Uh, we've done this before. A lot of people came out. We had a lot of fun. Um, lots of people travel. So we thought we would do that for those that are here. And like somebody said, well, that's not very spiritual. Yes, fellowship is very spiritual. Amen. Amen. That's where you connect and build relationships. So, no matter what ages, bring your favorite game. We'll have tables and we will get some uh, fun going that night. And if you want to bring your favorite snack to share, and we will make sure we get to share it. Amen. <laughs> so, be here next Wednesday night for that. Also, book club meets, meets this week, March 8th at 7. Um, and it will be at Audra's home. If you have any questions, give me a call. If you didn't read the book, it doesn't matter. Come anyhow. We have great fellowship and fun together. So come join us if you can. And then last but not least, guess what happens next Sunday? Daylight savings. Daylight savings. I'm telling you now so that we are set for it next week. So put that on your calendars. 
And uh, make sure you take note of that. And next <laughs> week you're at church at the right time. Amen? All right. Um, at this time we're going to let the ushers hand out the offering envelopes. And um, yeah. pastor's going to come up and do the offering for us. All right, if you have any trouble at all with that time change, just pretend like you're waking up in New York. <laughs> There's one hour ahead of us. Amen. And say, praise God, I'm in New York, and I'm all right. All right, that may work. If not, if that doesn't work, then go ahead and set your clock forward an hour on Friday night. And start dead eye seven time on Saturday. Then you're ready for Sunday. Your jet lag's over. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, also, I want to say, um, as we're handing out the offering envelopes here, thank you guys for being generous. Of course, the church, but also this uh, this Ukraine need. I guess you saw it on television. Uh, KXAN showed Shoreline uh, the appeal they made to help this church in Poland. They've been supporting for 15 years now. We have over 1.4 million Ukrainians have now fled out of their country as refugees, a nation of 44 million people, and they're still fleeing there by the thousands. And uh, they said on television, uh, Pastor Rob and Laura, they've already received over $100,000 towards that need. You guys have already given about $500. And so if you still want to give anything towards that above and beyond your tithes, just write on your envelopes the word Poland and then what amount is going to go to Poland. You also can give online with that as well. You that are watching and praise God, we're, we're going to see needs. We have so many precious folks there that need food, need clothing, need a place for shelter. And one church can't do everything, but we're just going to be praying to God that we see uh, needs met there for that nation and God's gonna intervene there more and more in that conflict as well. We also wanna say congratulations to Jack. Jack did his 50th capital, 51st, yesterday called the Washington, D.C. capital. So praise God, he's gone to all 50 states and Washington, D.C. and was most impressed by Texas, I'm sure. And uh, appreciated his traveling mercy protection. I think it took you about 12 months almost. Weeks. Took 50 weeks. So just like two weeks of being at every single state in this union. Amen. <laughs> he got to the point where he, when he first began, he was telling us, you know, I'm going to go to one capital for maybe two weeks, 10 days, something like that. We thought, well, that's a, a long, long time. As it kind of got going, he would be sometimes hitting three capitals in one day or, or in two days. <laughs> and then he, he actually went to Hawaii one day there, one day back home. I mean, we're supposed to go to Hawaii and stay one day. That's what Jack did. So, so they'll go back to all these places in the future with the wife when it's not a ministry trip. Amen. So God bless Jack and all the seed that was sown there, all the prayers took place. Amen. We'll let him report more on that in the, in the near future, I believe, as well. On some of his experiences there across our country. And he knows our, our nation needs prayer. We should know our nation needs prayer. God's doing good things in our country, but there's still better things God wants to do in this country. Amen. Uh, we also appreciate you guys who helped out with Emma. She had a, a great um, prophetic conference here Friday, Saturday. And we praise God for all the things that took place with that. We have some birthdays happening this week um, in the Alexi family. Uh, this is AJ's birthday. Where is it? Is Albert back here? Uh, this is the father and there's the mother. Right, right here is the, the, the mother and father. I'm not going to ask what AJ's age is, but I, I prayed about AJ this week. I uh, received Matthew chapter 10, verse 3. And it says, if, if the threat, if the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. And so God is not just trying to say, he's trying to find out if, if your son's worthy or not. But I just hear God saying his peace is going to be upon AJ because he sees many worthy things in him to bring that peace to him. Okay. So I just have to tell you to expect a lot of calmness to come to him. The eternal he's been going through. God's going to bring supernatural peace to him. I believe that. Then in the Wasson family, uh, there was one of them right here. She's downstairs with Children's Church. And when I was back in the sound booth here. And is, is uh, Kyla right here? Kyla in the, in the sanctuary? In the sanctuary? Upstairs also. Well, for Kyla, I received Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. And it says, the end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Now, I kind of heard God saying that some things on the back burner for Kyla, the things that God's begun there that are very obscure, she's going to find better things at the ending of what God's done. There's a lot of things God's began in Kyla that she hasn't seen the end to it yet. I'm not sure if it's all about education or even relationships, or whatever else there, but there's many things that God's begun, but the ending's going to be better than the beginning. And so let her realize that as well. And also she sees her humility. She's not proud in spirit. And because of that, there's going to be a, a release of God's patience upon her to, to walk through the things God has for her. Is anybody else having a birthday today or this week coming up here? Anybody that I might have missed? 
As far as anniversaries go, this is the anniversary week for um, Louis and Martha Carlos. Is that right? Where are you guys sitting in? Not yours. Is it your Jesse. son's? Yeah. Oh, see, I wrote the word Carlos in my notes, <laughs> getting the wrong one. It's Jesse. So it's actually it's Jesse. the other one. Cool. Carla back here and Jesse. So it's what number now for you guys? Ten. Number 10. That's a number of completion and foundation. So praise God. I sent you guys a card, give it to them. <laughs> Congratulations. Praise God, they got a brand new baby. Baby's doing very, very well. We're proud of that child as well. May God just bless this walk with you guys. There are great people out there in the business world and a great mother and father I know also, as well as husband and wife to each other. It's also the anniversary week. I know this is right names for David and Ginger Gibson. Are you guys here? Could be out on their anniversary celebration cruise right now. So uh, they're, if they're watching online in the future, God bless you folks as well. Anybody, anybody else having an anniversary this week? Let's take a moment and let's pray blessings as the ushers come to the front to receive our tithes and offerings today. And remember again to keep on sowing into uh, Poland. Remember to bring back your pledges also for youth camp. We can pick an envelope up, get that back to us also. And we're going to put all that towards the youth needs uh, of our camp and beyond. So Father, we praise you and thank you again, first of all, for these birthday folks, these anniversary couples. We speak blessings, God, upon them that you, Lord, is bless them with your guidance, your direction, your favor, your protection, your provision. We praise you, God, for the best year they've had yet in marriage, but also, God, in life on this earth. And we ask you, Father God, help them each one bear lasting fruit for the days ahead. We also speak blessings, God, upon this offering sown today. Help us, God, be wise stewards of all that you give us in our workplace, our homes, and our dealings with life. Also, in this church, oh God, we pray you rebuke the devourer for thy name's sake in our behalf. Give us, God, confidence that you're with us. Help the people, God, of our congregation receive raises, bonuses, promotions, and favor, God, even jobs they may need, not again because we're greedy, but because you want to be a conduit of blessing to folks around us. What you give us, God, we're going to release it also much of it back to people in need around us. We praise God and ask all these things in Jesus' wonderful Jesus. name. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless you, ushers. You, Wait upon the people now in tithes and offerings. Just the front row here. And... Um, I want to get right into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, we're going back to another familiar, familiar um, part of Scripture here in Isaiah chapter 40. So let's look at Isaiah 40. I'm on this series here called In God We Trust. And we'll talk this morning here about trusting God in our struggles. I was going to go a different path, a different um, line this, this morning totally. But the Holy Spirit just made it plain to me that He wants me to kind of keep on going just a little bit longer. Folks that are facing struggles in life. And so we're going to see what God does, what, what keys God gives us in trusting Him when struggles are happening around us or actually in us as well. Let me find this Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to start reading here in verse 27. And so it says in the New King James Version, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, that my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall, uh, shall what this utterly fall asleep. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Now this world's struggles are continuing on in big ways and small ways. This most recent thing here with the conflict and the war happening in Ukraine. There's all kinds of rumors happening by that. The Bible says again, one of the last days signs will be that there'll be wars and rumors of wars. And we're seeing that taking place, of course, in Eastern Europe right now in a big way as well. But also the smaller realm, we're seeing our own lives going through turmoil of things we've faced the past couple of years by pandemics and by economic things happening here, the price of gasoline, the price of things skyrocketing, economic turmoil, political turmoil is happening all around us. And it's kind of bleeding down into marriages, bleeding down into people's finances and so forth. And I really encourage you guys that even are single, if you have time to be here on Wednesday nights, we've ordered some more books. We have more people come Wednesday night for this teaching on marriage that I thought would be here. And so I ordered some more books. And even single folks who think you might be married one day will benefit from this teaching by Tony Evans. So I encourage even the singles to come. we got books for you that are complimentary. 
And I also kind of saw his, um, I know back in the Cold War days, I was really a, a young teenager in those era where Russia and America were arming themselves with nuclear weapons. They began telling us about the nuclear bombs being produced. And one bomb was called the H-bomb, able to actually, they, they believe, wipe out almost an entire state with one bomb, with nuclear waste and burning up and so forth and so on. And uh, now today we're seeing how even in, over in Ukraine, they're surrounding nuclear reactors. And I'm hearing threats even happening there about how we have the power now, the ability to mine these nuclear reactors and release radioactivity upon all of Europe. And we can make them bow if you guys just don't leave us alone, so forth, so on. And so I'm saying there's things happening around us about what could be, what might be, what can happen in the near future that can cause folks to have struggles in their own mind, their own heart. And I talk to my own kids sometimes and uh, folks that are on social media. I'm amazed that people are still sometimes even cowering in fear about what can take place in the future. The one thing is for certain, the Bible does tell us in this world, you will have tribulation. But then it says, but be of good cheer because I have overcome this world and no weapon that's going to be formed against us is going to prosper is what God tells us. So in these last days, it will be very, very unsettling and things around us in many ways. But the church of Jesus Christ is called by God, ordained by God, anointed by God, enabled by God to still be cheerful right in the midst of turmoil and struggles all around us. Do you believe that? Four folks do. Before I get done today, we're going to all be saying amen, amen, shouting hallelujah, and dancing around this pole building here yeah. with the voice of triumph. Okay? How many folks know the world throws curveballs at us, and sometimes the ball even hits us? Jack can testify about you know, how many plays ball himself. Sometimes the pitch goes so bad, it'll hit us in the elbow, the arm, the foot, the, even the face. And sometimes that's what the world does to us as well. It throws curveballs at us. Those curveballs sometimes even hit our bodies and bring bruises. They even break some bones. God's people were struggling in Isaiah chapter 40. They got involved in idolatry. They got involved in backsliding. They got involved in their own selfish practices. And every time they did that, they gave place to the devil. And then Satan would come in and start destroying them and beating them down and impoverishing them by the folks that actually were their enemies in the past. We only have victory over the devil and demons when God is on our side. So it's very, very important in these last days. Don't let the devil have any place in your life to beat you down, lie to you successfully, and try to bring struggles in your life that God does not bring upon you. Amen? Because most of our struggles aren't from God. They're from our own disobedience. They're from our own unbelief. And they're from sometimes even our own ignorance. Amen. God says you'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. But also says my people are perishing because of a lack of knowledge of the word of God. It's time to know the word, hear the word, soak up the word, and see what God says for our struggles. The entire nation of Israel is asking God this question. Don't you feel my pain? How can you let my struggle happen this way, this long, and this much? How can you do that? If you love me, God, and you're for me, O oh God, how can my struggle last this long, cause this much pain, and be this much? They're asking God this question, and God's not talking back to them. They're saying, where are you, God? There are times when it seems like God is actually absent. You know, Job, in the middle of all of his suffering, Job asked God, I look to the north and the south and the east and the west, and I cannot find you, O oh God, right in the midst of my suffering and my turmoil. Praise God. Read the whole book of Job to find that Job did find God. And God did answer Job in due time, in his time. But Job also got back double for his trouble Amen. and came back as a stronger man at the end than at the beginning. Amen. Amen. So God's in a process. Sometimes we go through. We don't like the process. But I believe God's grace will be with us during the process of the world struggling around us. Before Jesus Christ comes back. I heard, I've heard also. I was on a, a Zoom prayer meeting to Bangladesh. And some Indian pastors also. Uh, yesterday with Global Advance. At 9 o'clock in the morning. We pray for an hour once a month. To Bangladesh pastors. And I heard on the prayer room this morning. Also through Marjorie. I guess the reports coming to America as well. That you, you might ask yourself. Well where's God for Ukraine struggles? I'm seeing apartments being bombed. I'm hearing about bodies. People being killed. That are Ukrainians. I'm hearing about bullets being fired and so forth and so on. Where's God in their struggle? Well, they said on the Zoom meeting yesterday, they said there's reports are coming to us by Christians that are by the tens of thousands in Ukraine. Praise God for the revival that God sent to Ukraine years ago. There's hundreds of thousands of believers in Ukraine and Russia 
Those Christians in Russia praying about what they're doing against Ukraine, Amen. that it has no effect and God intervenes. Amen. So realize God does not hate Russia. God does not hate Russian people. God hates the devil and what he does. Amen. <laughs> Satan's come to kill, steal, and destroy. There's a lot of great believers in Russia that are praying right now about what's happening in that country. Amen. But what I want to say is the testimony I'm hearing is that time and time again in the struggle of Ukraine, Christians are seeing tanks running out of gas supernaturally. They're seeing missiles not exploding that hit buildings. They're seeing missiles going off course or falling out of the sky supernaturally. They're seeing God intervene for them again and again and again, and people are not being killed that would be killed had God not intervened for them. Yes, Lord. So I want to see you guys again today. The tornadoes may come, but I don't need to receive what tornadoes are going to do to my house. If I hear a tornado is coming, I'm going to rebuke that tornado in Jesus' name, and not as an act of God, but an act of the devil, and it's going to hop over my house in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I praise, I need to praise God and thank God again. He can still intervene even over man's weapons yes, Lord. in these last days. America may face this itself one day. Amen. We're a very, very blessed country where we have relative peace around us. The rest of the world is not like this in many ways. And don't take this for granted, but be praying for the Ukraine. Be praying Amen. those weapons have no effect. Amen. And God protects people's lives here because God is doing that. And God is answering prayer. Yes, and I thank Lord. him for that as well. Some of you are facing circumstances of unfulfilled dreams, unfulfilled desires. Pain is not leaving your body like you want it to. Amen. You've relinquished yourself that pain will be here forever. Some of you guys have lost relationships. You've lost finances. You've lost your health. And God is saying it's not time to give up. It's time to see what I'm saying about that and still worship me right in the middle of the struggles Amen. you're going through in life. It's what you're facing when you're asking things like, where is God when my world is falling apart? Where is God at? Now, God, again, works in ways that totally blows our minds sometimes. I want to say again, God is not dead. God is not sleeping. God is not slumbering. God is still working by his spirit. But he does things the way he does things. And he always gets the biggest bang for his buck as well. Amen. So when God speaks into their situation with Israel, he does not speak scientifically. He does not speak to them technologically. He does not speak academically. He does not speak in psychology, but he speaks in theology. When he answers them back and they ask him the question, where is God in the midst of all of our struggles? God answers this in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. He says back to them, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of all the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is he weary, there is no searching of his understanding. One translation says, his wisdom is beyond human understanding. Yes, it is. God's word tells us what? I work all things together for the good. For those that are called by me and those who love me and are, 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 are made on this earth according to my purpose is what God tells them. Those who say, where is God at? He's saying that when your world is falling apart, it's not time to run from him. It's time to run to him. Amen. 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 When things are going bad in your marriage, your finances, your life, your health, don't run from God. Don't get mad at God, but run to God. Yes. Because God is ever-present help in times of trouble. God is faithful. God is true. God is just. And God does more than they ask, think, or imagine in his way and in his timing. There's three things in uh, verse 28 he wants us to know. First of all, he's everlasting. Secondly, he is all wise. Third, he is our creator. So we must retreat to the character of God in the crisis of life, regardless of the emotions of our circumstances. No matter what your emotions are doing in your life, squash your emotions and run to the character of God, the God of peace, the God of love, the God of power, the God of mercy, the God is with us no matter what the world throws at us. Run to him and seek the character of God, not your emotions that are so deceitful. Yes. He's everlasting. That she means that God is omnipotent. He's always was, always will be, is here right now among us. That also means he's going to always be on our side because time is on his side. Amen. What God told me very plain this morning was this to tell you folks this, that yes, in God's economy, there's beginnings and there's endings. 
But in God's endings, there's always new beginnings. Amen. 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 So there's beginnings and there's endings, even for the world. But once the world passes away, there's a new beginning. Right. Behold, a new heaven, a new earth. Yes. All things that are bad pass away. And behold, I make all things become new. So praise God, because he is everlasting. It means he can give you beginnings and endings, but then give you new beginnings Amen. from the ending that you need to have in your life. And God gives the right endings as well. He's creator. That actually means anything destroyed, God can recreate. God can restore anything the devil destroys around us. Amen. Satan may destroy your marriage in some way, somehow, but God can recreate your marriage. You must put your marriage in God's hands and do what God says about your marriage as well. Third of all, it says he's all knowing, which means he knows how to bring beauty out of ashes. God can work so redemptively in your life. It will appear that God brought your tragic thing of struggle himself, but God did not do that. But God can work redemptively so powerfully you'll think God brought the bad thing to begin with. But now God didn't do that. Satan did. But God works redemptively. God turns what is the devil means for evil. God turns that somehow to the good as only he can do. Even the thing right now happening in Ukraine, we're going to pray about that, like I said, on a consistent basis. God will start turning things in that situation for the good. It will keep praying God's will be done upon this earth as his will is done in heaven. God is hard to understand sometimes. God can be extremely confusing the way he works. The way he does things does, does not always add up or does not always make sense. How many folks know that Jesus was God in the flesh? Amen. Amen. And Jesus Christ did things the way God does things. He said, I only do what I see the Father doing. So you see Jesus, you're seeing God the Father. They're the same exact person as far as the way they act and think and do. Okay. And so in John chapter 7, verse 1, Jesus tells the disciples, we're going to avoid Judea because the Jews are trying to kill me there. We're not going to go there. Then in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, it says Jesus tells the disciples, we must go to Jerusalem. I must suffer and die there. One time he says, I'm not going to go there. They're going to try to kill me. Next time he says, we're going to go there. I need to die. <laughs> Isn't that just like confusing? Doesn't that seem kind of mixed up? Well, the fact is, God's not in a box. God works one way, one day, one way, another way, but God still knows what he's doing because God's trying to bring forth all things working together for the good. Amen. God's a God of the green light and the red light and the yellow light. Amen. Sometimes God says stop. Sometimes God says go. Sometimes God says use caution. But God is not, is not in a box. And God does not do the same things the same way every single time. That's why I'm encouraging all of us, let's be hearing God's voice. Listening for God's voice. Obeying God's voice. Right now I'm having a real struggle. I'm trying to plan going over to Africa in the summertime. And I'm realizing that fear is still gripping many people's hearts and lives. They feel they can't travel perhaps on airplanes. They can't travel to foreign countries. They're, they're fearful, I know, of things in place. Many folks have died, over a million folks, I understand, have died of this virus and so forth. But I'm saying at the same time here, I believe the timing is coming back to the body of Christ and God's reopening the world back up once again. And we need to get back into the world in Jesus' name, Amen. even with our bodies as much as possible. So I'm trying to pray through the frustrations there again about getting people up and out of this country into other places there. And it'll take place in due time. And I'm trying to be patient with that. So I want you to look now sometime in your own time. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. And it says that God has secrets. And he also has things revealed. So God's got some secret things. He won't tell you the answer to right now. But God also has things he reveals. But his word also says he reveals his secrets to his prophets. And to his people. And so there's secret things that we don't even know about right now yet. But God's revealing them to his prophets and to his people in his last days. I really strongly believe myself prophetically that there's seals being broken right now in the spiritual realm. They're talking about revelations. And if I am right about that, um, if it's true, I'm not saying it's set in stone here. If the next seal is being broken right now that I'm perceiving in the spiritual realm, we're entering into the time where it says a loaf of bread will cost a day's wages. You're going to start seeing inflation, I believe, take place more and more and more upon the world, not just America, but upon the world. Now, I still want to encourage you as a pastor, try to get out of debt.
Try to get some kind of a savings account of some kind, something for the future as well. And try to also learn to say, God, help me be content with such things as I have. Amen. Because most folks go broke and go in great debt for things they think they need to have. They may not really need to have so much. And so I'm saying, time is coming here again where God's I believe, going to prosper and bless his people in great ways in the midst of famine. Amen? Amen. But at the same time, you're going to tell us you're going to be a conduit of blessing to folks around you that we're not so wise with their finances and their goods. Okay? And so I'm just saying that again. The world's going through a time of turmoil, and I really believe the spiritual realm seals are being broken before Christ comes back. Talked about in Revelations. We need to understand this because otherwise... When our world is unraveling, we're going to fall prey to the circumstances as we also lose our trust in the one who's above our circumstances. And God says, don't lose trust in the one who's above your circumstances when things are unraveling in the life around you as well. It's very easy to go from questions to God and questioning God. God doesn't mind you asking him questions. Amen. But he does mind you questioning him. When you question God, you're telling him, you're saying, saying to God, I know better than you do. Amen. I would have done it this way, oh God. <laughs> and God says back to us, guess what? You're not God. I'm God. Amen. Praise God, he's God, and we're not God. Amen? Amen. Newsflash. If God Amen. remains silent to us during times of struggle, it means in his sovereignty, he knows it's best you don't know what he knows right now. Sometimes God's quiet to protect you. Because God knows more than you do about the situation. And so God keeps quiet because he's sovereign about the future. Many folks today believe that all that God does is help us, deliver us, empower us, bless us. They don't realize that God also dictates to us. They don't let God dictate to them. we got a whole lot of folks that are seeing God as Santa Claus. And all he does is gives out gifts and bless us and does good things. God does do all those things. Amen. Praise God that God does that. Amen. But God is bigger than that. Amen. God's also our Father. Amen. He's also sovereign. He also loves the entire world. And God also loves unbelievers. Amen. And so God will take all the people, all the folks in the Bible, like David, like Joseph, like Ruth, or whoever you want to pick out there, they all went through struggles doing the will of God. Because God used them, because God says in Psalms, You are my war club, you are my weapon of battle. Have you ever seen weapons used by soldiers? They're scuffed up, they're scratched up, there's dents in them, there's blood stains on them. That's what God calls you. You are his war club. There's going to be blood stains on you, dents on you, and scratches on you as well in your flesh. Because in your flesh dwells no good thing. But the fact is your spirit man will go stronger and stronger and stronger so the weapon formed against you will prosper in this hour and this season as well. And God is going to give us a militant spirit to pray more and more militant prayers and believe God for great results from that as well. We need to remind ourselves that he is God when times are up and he is God when times are down. Amen. He is God when the baby's being born in the hospital room. Amen. He is God. He's also God when your child dies prematurely. God's there both times, both ways. God is still God in tragedy and in triumph. Amen. So what do you do? When life caves in on you, I'm going to give you three take-home points and close with these three take-home points. What do you do when God's, when life caves in on you? Number one, you do this. Psalms, I mean, Isaiah chapter 40 says this, first of all, wait on the Lord. Number one, you wait on the Lord. When struggles are happening, you wait on the Lord. Now, what's that word wait mean? This word wait is a very, very rich Hebrew word with a, with a long meaning to it. Because also what it means there is uh, many, many women in this room know, know this word, what it actually talks about here. The word wait is associated with the plaiting of the hair. Women know that is perhaps, plaiting of the hair. Plaiting, plaiting in South Africa, they call it plaiting. We call it plaiting. You call it, well, I was going to say that next, but she just said, <laughs> said it anyway, didn't you? Wow. Uh, plaiting. You know, plaiting is also the word braiding. So she had a lot of interpretation up here. Plaiting is also the braiding of the hair. Okay? So waiting on the Lord talks about braiding. And now why, why do women braid their hair primarily? So when the wind is blowing like today, they don't have a bad hair day. 
<laughs> we cannot mess with plaiting and braided hair. Amen. It's already tied up. The wind can't mess with it there. They also can walk easier. They can go faster, better. It's called the plaiting and the braiding of the hair. No longer subject to the wind that causes struck. Those who wait upon the Lord shall plait their hair. And the wind will no longer cause them struggles in life. But also the word waiting also means to not go outside of God to fix things. To not go outside of God to fix things. That's a hard thing to do. When God's not working fast enough, strong enough, good enough, we tend to get in the flesh and help God out. And when you start helping God out, bad things happen. Amen? Because God knows what's best. God's got his own timing. God's saying avoid other options in your struggles. Right. Always put God first in your struggles. He will plait your hair. He will cause that wind to cease around you. In the Bible, Joseph had to wait upon God in prison. Moses in the desert. Rahab, the prostitute in Jericho around pagan ungodly people had to wait for the armies of Israel to come and rescue her. The return of Jesus Christ, all believers right now are waiting for him right now. And what God is saying, the common thread for Rahab and Joseph and Moses was they all were braided and connected to a living God during the waiting season before God showed up. Amen. Amen. And so God is saying to you and I today until Jesus Christ comes back, because the Bible even says New Testament, it says the people of God will be saying, oh, God, where is your return? When are you coming back? I can't take this any longer. And God says just a little while longer and I will return. But in the meantime, braid your hair and plait your head because the wind's blowing too successfully in your life and causing upheaval to take place around you. How do you know when you're successfully waiting on God? The way you know is this. You spend more time worshiping than complaining. You spend more time worshiping than complaining. Amen. That's the, the litmus test. Am I successful in waiting upon the Lord? In this hour, in this season. It's sometimes difficult to, to go to God when you're in the struggle. You need to practice sometimes braiding before the struggle even takes place in your life. And that's why Daniel tells us, those who know, intimately know their God shall be strong and do exploits in the last days. I'm telling you right now, sometimes you start braiding yourself, your life, your soul, your thoughts, your actions, your habits with the Lord now. Before the struggle comes to America. Amen. Amen. Get to know your God better. Get in a habit of reading your Bible. Of praying. Worshiping God. Spending time with the Lord. Knowing God. And in intimacy. It is time to braid your hair now. Not when the struggle comes. Because then it's too late. Very, very hard to braid your hair. When the wind is blowing at 100 miles an hour in your face. You go to a still quiet place. In your house. Your, ba your bathroom. To braid your hair. Having a sister. I know that. Having daughters, I know that. Amen? You go to a quiet place. You go to a still place. You braid your hair there. And then when the winds come, you're ready for it. Your hair is braided. Amen? Amen. Number two is this. Isaiah 40 goes on and says, wait upon the Lord first. And number two, receive then God's new strength. Receive God's new strength. There is strength that you currently do not have that God does have. Because God's word says when you're weak, I am strong. When you fall, I will build you up. I will lift you up, says God. When you're in a crisis, strength is drained, but God is the supercharger, like a cell phone that needs to be plugged into the wall. Your battery may be dead, but God's battery is never dead. And God says, plug yourself into my kingdom, my worship, my praise, my presence, and I will supercharge you once again. And you'll find your strength gets renewed like the eagles is what God's telling us in his word. I said last week that word, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. That word quicken actually means he will invigorate your mortal body and even impregnate you with his thoughts, his dreams, and his plan for your life. If you wait upon God, God will quicken, God will invigorate, give you supernatural power. So I was praying this morning before church here. God was telling me there's many people or several people watching. Or you may be here right now in the sanctuary that you've lost a lot of strength in the spiritual realm. God wants you to be strengthened in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you get stronger by exercising your faith. 
You need to exercise your faith. Amen? And God's going to help us do that. Number three, last of all, you wait then, you wait for God's intervention, enablement, and endurance. That is the last way, or the last thing you do when things start caving in all around you. You take and you wait for God's intervention, enablement, and endurance. When God gives you new strength, the result's going to be from this. You will mount up, first of all, with wings like eagles. Isaiah 40 says that. When God gives you new strength, you're going to find three things take place. Number one, you're going to find out you're going to mount up with wings like eagles. What does that mean? Why did, why did God say that on purpose? God never puts anything in the Bible by accident. God's wise. God knows what he's talking about. God made eagles. What do eagles do when pesky birds attack them in nature? Well, in nature, I've been told, and I've seen this a little bit myself as well in Colorado, when a golden eagle or a bald eagle is attacked by crows or by smaller little birds around it, they know they can't turn around and outmaneuver them and chop their head up with their beak like they want to do. What they do do is they spread their wings out and they catch the air currents and they climb so high the little bird can't breathe. Only they can breathe. God made eagles to breathe at over a mile up in the air and sparrows can't do that. Crows can't do that. Little birds can't do that, but eagles can do that. And God says when the devil's in, around you and making you struggle, he'll give you the wings of an eagle to catch new waves, new currents, and rise up so high in the heavenly places, all the things will start falling away from you as they get worn out. And they go by the wayside. And they just give up. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 says, He has seated us in heavenly places with Jesus Christ, the Lord. I believe God's doing that for his body, body today as well. Secondly, if God does not give you divine intervention, by causing you to rise above wings like eagles above all enemies, he'll do number two. Number two is this. You'll run and not grow weary, not get tired. I told you guys about how the last days, Revelation says there'll be a spirit of Elijah and Moses loosed upon the body of Christ. And that means everything around the lives in the Bible of Moses and Elijah will be mirrored somehow in these last days. You're seeing that happen around us. The main spirit we're fighting right now is what? Jezebel. Jezebel is the main spirit that was fighting and attacking against Moses and against also Elijah. And praise God, the good news is Elijah had her killed. She got killed as the, as the apostles rose up, as Jehu rose up. As the prophet went along, the apostle and worked together, they cut off Je uh, Je or killed Jezebel in one minute. And praise God, it takes place also, I believe, today. Getting back to Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46, after Elijah defeats the prophets of Baal, he sees the cloud the size of a man's hand. He tells his servant, tell Ahab, the king of Israel, rain is coming, get in your chariot, run back to where you come from. It says, Elijah... Fastened and braided up his loins, plaited up his loins, and ran so fast he beat Ahab with a horse. He was on foot to the place he was going to many, many miles away. And he was not tired when he got there. That's what takes place when you braid your hair in God's kingdom. But then notice what it goes on and says now in verse Kings 19 and verse 3. When Elijah heard what Jezebel said... When she said the words, may your life be like the lives of those dead prophets by this time tomorrow. It says he got afraid. And it says in verse 3, 19th chapter, he arose and he ran. Notice that. For his life. He ran for his life. And he went to a place called the underneath area of a broom tree, the driest, most worthless tree on the earth is where he went to. He, set, he took and traded the running for God for running for his own life. And what God is saying to you and I is this last day, do not get into a spirit of self-preservation or you're going to find yourself running your race and running from the devil and running from Satan. And running from your sickness. And running from your marriage. Running from your problems, your struggles. You're going to find yourself running for your life. And God says there's no anointing for that. There's no strength for that. There's no renewal for that. There's no grace for that. You're running for your life. 
When you run for God's purposes, there will be supernatural strength. You'll run and not grow weary. Do you see that? Then last of all, number three, if you don't find yourself having divine intervention take place by mounting with the wings like eagles above all your enemies, you might then start seeing this thing here where God intervenes here by giving you divine endurance and divine strength by running. And if God does not do that in your struggle, he'll do number three, the most common thing. You shall walk and not faint. How many folks here realize that you walk a whole lot more than you run? You walk a whole lot more than you fly. Amen. Walking is the most common thing you do. And in your struggles, the most common thing you're going to do is walk and not faint. There's folks in this room right now today, you're walking through something you've been walking through for months and weeks. And it's sitting to start, starting to wear you out. But God says you'll walk and not faint. Mounting up the wings like eagles is great, divine intervention. Running is also good, divine enablement. But walking is divine endurance. I'm going to ask Greg to come back to the platform, get Greg's help here as I pray here in a moment. But I want to say this is where God does not change the situation. This is where God changes you. I'm going to say that again. Walking is where God does not change your situation. God changes you. Amen. Amen. You know, time and time again, I've heard people who've gone through battles for months and sometimes years about rebellious kids, sicknesses, illnesses, poverty, whatever else. And they prayed and they prayed. They've gone to every major ministry in the whole nation. They had the hands laid upon them and prayed for them as well. And no breakthrough takes place. And all of a sudden, in desperation, they get alone with God. They say, God, I just give up. I give up. I'm yours. Kill me right now if you want to. I'm, I'm yours, oh God. I just want to worship you and praise you. I, to, I love you, God, unconditioned. No matter what you do, God, I love you. I praise and worship you. Let my heart, God, be steadfast in you. You're first in my life. I love you and praise your name. And they start doing something like that and start dying to self. And God all of a sudden shows up, sovereignly shows up. Time and again, the healing breaks forth. The breakthrough of finances takes place. The rebellious kid comes right. They get at the end of their strength and their running and their walking. And they put in themselves in God's hands. And God says, oh, you're going to finally get this to me now? Finally for real? All of it? All of it to me? All of it? Okay. Let me work on your behalf. When you're weak, I'm strong. And I'll be strong on your behalf. We wish that God would only do the eagle. Just zap, intervene. And God does do that many times, but not always. We wish God help us to run all the time. But God has also do that all the time as well. And I found in, as I go back to the gym now last week, it's been months. I call the gym the torture chamber. I get on this thing called the uh, elliptical, but I get onto the treadmill. And praise God, these guys have learned that are gymnast experts to put a TV screen on the treadmills and on the ellipticals. Because they know if you only focus on the treadmill, going boom, 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 you're going to get worn out real fast. Watch that little clock go by. 12, 12 minutes, 12, 11, 12, 10, 12, 9, 12, 8, 12, 7, 12, 6. My Lord, I got, I've done 15 minutes of this now. But all of a sudden you take and start looking at the screen watching the news or watching home building projects. The time goes by quicker, faster. Renew, strength gets renewed. You go through 15 minutes real fast, real quick. Because God knows your focus must not be upon the treadmill, upon the problem, upon the struggle. It's got to be upon Him. Focus must shift to him. Get your shift and your eyes off your problem, your struggle, what's causing the struggle. Get your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Well, our heads are, are, are bowed right now. Our eyes are closed. It's for privacy's sake and to focus on God right now. We wish that God would do the eagle. God would give us supernatural ability to run at least. But God would say, no, mainly, I'm going to ask you to walk. Walk. Those who walk, they shall walk and not faint. They shall not lose heart. As Curtis Baker came here as a guest speaker two weeks ago and prophesied and said, in this church called Tree of Life Church, Holy Spirit is speaking a word to me about the word endurance. But many folks that are here right now, you're going to start enduring some things, walking some things out. But God is faithful. 
He knows the beginning from the ending, and there is an ending, and the ending has got a better beginning after it, says the Lord. Father, I'm praying right now for discernment of people in this church, the service that are right here live, those that are watching online. Help us each one discern which one do you want to do, O God, to release us from our struggle. Do you want to do a divine intervention, God, like the eagle? Help us just to rise up above all the little birds that are pecking at us and just remove them in one day or one hour or one minute or one second. Do you want to do that, O God? We say, yes, Lord. We're open to that. We ask you, O God, yes, do that, Lord. For God, are you saying to us, I'm going to give you divine strength to run and not grow weary. For God, are you saying to us, you're going to be able to walk with my grace, my word, my faith, and not faint, and not give up, and not look at the clock on the treadmill. You're going to look at the picture on the screen, and you're going to see my face. You're going to see my word. You're going to see my presence bring forth my answer, says God. Father, I'm praying right now for those that are out there watching also online who may not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, those may be here also in the sanctuary. Let us know, God, first of all and foremost, you love us as sons and daughters first. And Lord God, your word says we must be born again to be a child of God, to be a child of God. And the good news is, oh God, you said that because my son Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead and shed his blood, I have received his blood as a spotless, blemishless, blemishless uh, sacrifice to take sin from all those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall be saved. And to call upon your name simply means, I confess I can't save myself. I cannot deliver myself. But, oh God, I seek a deliverer. I seek a savior. And I ask you, oh God, by the power of your son, Jesus Christ, Come inside my heart. Come inside my life. Be my God. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive you in my heart. And I thank you, God, you take sin from me. Remove, oh God, all my sin, all things I've done wrong from me, but also, God, you live inside of me. And you will lead me, guide me, and direct me, oh God, in your plan, your path you have for me from the foundations of the earth. No matter what you've done in life, you're never too far from God. He does not hear that prayer. God always hears that prayer. I'm going to ask right now, while well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed in the sanctuary, if you've never prayed that prayer before to Jesus Christ, to God, would you raise one hand right now to God? Just raise one hand up. Anybody like that today in this place? Let's all stand to our feet now as our prayer partners come to the front. I pray that if you guys that are watching and have never prayed that prayer before, you will today, you will right now, you did even right then. You'll let us know by getting a hold of us through emails, by telephone calls, by our webpage. We'll be glad to send some materials to you. The main thing is realize that God's not just after converts getting saved. He's after disciples. He's got a call for you. Getting saved is just the beginning of your walk with God. You need to find a local church that preaches the word of God, that believes in the Holy Spirit, that believes that God is the way, the truth, the life through His Son, Jesus Christ. Get into a church. Get plugged in. Start reading the book of John. Read the book of John, New Testament. You'll learn about Jesus in the book of John. And God will start revealing Himself to you. God will start showing you why you're on this earth. You're not on the earth just to live the American dream. There's more than that for you. Amen. If you want to receive prayer today for anything in your body, your finances, your marriage, relationships, or folks that need prayer today that are not here that need prayer please take time to come to the front and find a prayer partner here if you do that to pray with them that god would touch your life and, and help you out today in the way that god wants to do that by his spirit and i'm going to go ahead and um, i'm going to leave one of our prayer partners let's just get audra to get the microphone if you don't mind you can dismiss us officially here in prayer have you received anything at all today are you, are you glad you came to church Amen. you're going to go to the best restaurant in town and have brunch <laughs> you came to church instead, amen? Hallelujah. I praise God for that. This is one little joke, inside joke I've got. The church I was raised in Kansas, they always said, how many folks want to be in church or be in the hospital? It's always better to be in the church than the best hospital in town. I didn't think it was a very good comparison. <laughs> I think a better comparison, how many folks want to be in church than the best restaurant in town with a free meal? Yeah. Five of you. <laughs> 
This is the food. This is the food that Jesus sought after that does not perish. Amen. So we're going to honor and dismiss us in prayer. Come back if you can Wednesday night for part two. Books will be here on Kingdom Marriage by Tony Evans. And God bless you, folks. We love you guys. We're praying for you, folks. Be praying for us. Be praying for Ukraine. And let us be faithful to Amen. give to them as well as we goes by. God bless you. Thank you, dear Audra. Dear Lord, we just love you so much. We thank you, dear Jesus, that you're always there for us, that you are our way, and you are the truth, and you are the life. And we just pray that you go with each one of us this week and help us to realize that, to know in our hearts that you have the plan for us and that you uh, it is all planned out. And we have a hope in our future in you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, brother. God bless your marriage. Thank you.